Testosterone, steroid versus medicine. This arguably is gonna be the most important video I'll ever make. Testosterone itself is the basis of man. Testosterone is the basis of medical testosterone replacement, therapeutic regimens. It's also the basis for every steroid user in the world. Every steroid user uses a base of testosterone. With this presentation, I will cover in summary the history of this incredible, incredible hormone that makes men men. From oral agents to transdermal suspension itself, injections to esters. We will cover the Anabolic Steroids Control Act of 1990 in America, in addition to the FDA warnings to gurus and coaches. Indeed, the FDA drug safety warnings of 2015 and 2016. I'll cover the chemical structure of this incredible compound. Medical uses, highlights on how it was used for women, and actually, as a fertility agent for men. Side effects, incredible side effects and the basis of anabolic steroid induced hypogonadism that we see today. And also for the need for PCT and how that came about. And also in the end, I'll talk about my summary. For young men, women, parents, and doctors about this incredible substance. With no further ado, the history of testosterone itself. Well, when you look at testosterone in the books, in the history, you'll see 30 different types of testosterone. So, I've done my research for this to be very concise. There are testosterone pills, there's an oral form, there's a buccal form, it's a patch, there are transdermal gels and patches, and of course there's intermuscular injected types, and there's a testosterone pellet. So, with the basis of that understood, this presentation will be a general presentation about testosterone therapeutically, and of course how it's abused by steroid users. Since the 1930s, testosterone was developed and found by the German scientists after they boiled down urine. Dozens of liters from firemen and policemen, they derived the initial gram of powdered testosterone. And from that point, <clears throat> they started to understand how it would be chemically used, pharmaceutically used as pill form, and then into injections. Realizing the pill form was not going to work as it was readily readily broken down in the GI tract. So very quickly in the 1930s, they started to make this into testosterone suspension that we all know today. That's the beginning of this intermuscular agent. It was exactly free testosterone in crystals from large crystals to small crystals put in a water aqueous based solution, undissolved, small teeny crystals directly for intermuscular administration. And there's anecdotes of this type of testosterone being caught up in as men in, introduced this intermuscularly and hung up inside the needles, especially in the veterinarian form, which are very large crystals. And I've heard of even men having to use a 21 gauge needle to administer this. Absolutely incredible. So over this time period, <clears throat> there was a development into esters, intermuscular esters. And the scientists of the day during that time period, now we're coming into the 40s and to the mid 50s, they decided and they discovered that if they attach an ester group onto the structure of testosterone, 
it will slow down the administration into the circulation and therefore lead to a easier, less frequently administered, and a less painful injection. All of this therapeutically considered for medical use. There's no cheating at this time. It, what is isn't understood to be used as a cheating agent. So in the mid-1950s, depot testosterone came into play and on the market by the pharmaceutical giant Upjohn. Still on the market today, Depot Testosterone, brand name by Pfizer. During that time period in the 1950s and 60s, it was starting to be abused all over the world. And by the 1960s, it was well known, but only in special circles. And you understand during this time period, this is when scientists and individuals started realizing that this agent needed to be tweaked and changed because of the side effect profile. And that's the beginning of anabolic steroids. And anabolic steroids, as we know, are derivatives of testosterone, nandolone, and DHT. And you'll see my other videos on those. So, during this time period medically, which I will cover, from the 60s into the 70s, even into the 80s, it was being utilized medically, and we'll discuss that. The federal government, the FDA, realized that it was being abused and it wasn't really a medical agent of great utility because of the side effects. So they refined those indications. Now, during that time period, into the 1980s, this was prescribed by medical physicians. Regular family doctors gave it to men for muscle building. They didn't see anything wrong with it. That's interesting, true history. Now, during this time period, again, it was used more and more for cheating, and it was relevant, and the federal government realized this. So, in 1990, a congressional act called the Anabolic Steroids Control Act of 1990 came into play, and it says in three parts. Number one, establish penalties for physical trainers or advisors who endeavor to persuade or induce individuals to possess or use anabolic steroids. That is a direct, clear threat for felony, for coaches and gurus. I didn't even know this. That's the law. Number two, it made anabolic steroids a controlled three schedule drug medically that stands today. Number three, defined anabolic steroids as any drug or hormone substance that promotes muscle growth in a manner pharmaceutically similar to testosterone. That is very interesting. The next act through this period by our government in America in 2015, the U.S. Food and Drug Administration laid out that this medicine, testosterone, for medical use should be used only for organic causes of low testosterone, hypogonadism. Not anti-aging, they specify that. And they caution that this medicine may cause heart attack, stroke, and death. Next year, 2016, the FDA placed an increased warning on all testosterone products that they may be abused, they say, by bodybuilders with withdrawal symptoms and dependence. This is the basis for anabolic steroid-induced hypogonadism. Now the chemical structure. As I said before, testosterone is the chemical structure. It's been altered so for it to be allowed for different administration and pharmacokinetic profiles. So, I will present the most common form utilized of testosterone medically. Certainly a common form of abuse today, and that's testosterone cypionate. This is one of the most common base esters that we see. Testosterone cypionate is produced initially by the base molecule of testosterone where they add a carboxylic acid ester 
called cyclopentylpropanoic acid. It's attached to the 17 beta hydroxy group. This esterification, if you will, to the molecule of testosterone makes it less poor than the parent compound testosterone and therefore it's more slowly absorbed from the bloodstream after administration. Let's talk about half-lives. Half-life of testosterone, esters, sipinate, and enanthate, which are essentially similar. Five to eight days after injection versus suspension, testosterone suspension. Half-life is two to four hours. And some studies have said maybe up to 24 hours. Now, compared to intermuscular, long-acting testosterone undecanate, half-life is 90 days, maybe 60 days in some studies. That's amazing. What a, what a variety here. Versus oral testosterone undecanate, where the peak to concentration is 4 to 5 hours, and the half-life is approximately 8 to 12 hours. Medical uses of testosterone. The main medical use of testosterone is with hormone replacement for men. That's the mainstay. It's also amazing that this is the mainstay steroid that's used by men, where they use it as a base and they add other agents on it. Other medical uses historically have been women suffering from a condition called menorrhagia where they have excessive menstrual bleeding. Also with women that have excessive lactation. Now I would assume this is obviously breastfeeding babies and that's the physiological piece. I would assume that they would not give testosterone to a woman who's lactating and breastfeeding. So this must be when lactation is over, she's done breastfeeding, they would give the woman testosterone injections to shut down her lactation. Further utilities medically for women, osteoporosis, as we see with the other steroids. And amazing to see that this was used for metastatic breast cancer treatment for women. Not used today for that, I could tell you that. And a very little known fact of the utility of testosterone being used for male infertility, given one mil of 200 milligrams concentration every six to 10 weeks to a man who's thought to be infertile, the condition leads to testosterone rebound therapy, where the initial bolus of testosterone actually increases spermatogenesis. Of course, we know that further use of testosterone over a period of time leads to azospermia and a, a significant decrease in spermatogenesis and therefore uh, infertility. And it's always been considered, but not cleared yet, as a male birth control device. Side effects of testosterone. Now this is gonna be both medically and also as the basis as it's used for a steroid. Androgenic and virilization, number one. You're gonna see male pattern balding. You're gonna see acne potentially. Voice changes, of course, more noticeable in women. Facial structural changes, of course, more noticeable in women. Loss of breast tissue. Increase in muscle tissue, of course. Changes in libido, not always increased libido, but sometimes labile libido. Decrease in fertility, or as we've seen before, increase short-term infertility for men. Definitely a decrease in testicular size as it affects the hypothalamus pituitary gonad axis. Increase in growth of the clitoris on a woman. Prostate issues for men, ranging from benign prostatic hyperplasia to prostatitis. Testosterone is definitely potentiated into DHT by an enzyme called 5-alpha reductase. And we will see that the effects of testosterone androgenically are heightened by this. This we know. So, using the 5-alpha reductase blockers 
finasteride and dutasteride, we will see these effects diminished. But the problem is that I see when this is used as a steroid and induced medically, where men are trying to use these blockers either for hair loss protection or for prostatic protection, it's going to affect the libido. It's very sensitive. That's definitely a warning. Next, estrogenic side effects. This is the classic estrogenic steroid. Testosterone definitely undergoes aromatization via the enzyme aromatase. So you're going to see increased puffiness in water, gonochromastia, and you'll definitely see changes in the central nervous system. Men get affected by this. The labile balance of androgen to estrogens in a man's brain, from depression to anxiety, irritability. Aromatase inhibitors will definitely work on this effect, but men are very sensitive. And I've seen this as a medical physician from years of work in my studies, from using it in post-psychotherapy to using it very small doses in balancing men on TRT. It's very, 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 very powerful agent, these aromatase inhibitors. And you'll see changes in the central nervous system. You'll see lipid changes with definitely a decrease in the HDL, where I've seen heart attacks in men because of this. And of course, over years and years, if you use an aromatase inhibitor, you actually may lower estrogen so low that it will affect the bones and you'll get men with osteoporosis. Next piece, testosterone derived intermuscular agents, even the oral agents, are not liver and renal toxic, certainly not at physiologic doses. And they're really not even seen to be liver or directly renal toxic in steroid doses, but that's never a blessing. It never is. I've seen men utilizing steroids, in, in including always a base of testosterone with other steroids for many, many years, even decades. And I've seen many cases of kidney failure and chronic kidney disease. And the type that we see is focal segmental glomerular sclerosis. The mechanism is not understood, but there are many studies on this. We see this more, in my opinion, from susceptible men. We're going to see this in African-American men, unfortunately, more. And hypertension, men that are susceptible to hypertension. And there's definitely going to be a dose-dependent variability on this. Men that use more and more steroids, more toxic doses, they're going to have uh, issues across the board with all medical issues. But I do see renal failure. I have many men that are, are heading into dialysis and the need of kidney transplant. Please, please take warning on this. Interesting that the oral form of testosterone for medical purpose in TRT, testosterone undecanate, we, it's absorbed through lymphatics and it bypasses the liver and therefore it's not liver toxic. Side effects continued. We definitely see an increase in DVTs utilizing medical testosterone for TRT and steroid users. And that's going to be a clot in the lower legs, classically, that can break away and go up into the lungs and cause a deadly pulmonary embolus. Please be careful, especially in men that are susceptible with hypercoagulable features and family histories. You need to take that family history with genetics. Cardiac side effects of testosterone, both medically for TRT and obviously advanced into steroid users. It's going to affect lipids. It's going to increase the LDL for some men, not all, dose dependent. And it's always going to affect usually lowering the HDL. It, because it's estrogenic, you can get puffiness. You can get labile and increase in hypertension. Of course, on the heart itself, we see it increased in the left ventricle size over years and years, in addition to these other issues, especially hypertension, that can lead to diastolic and systolic heart failure. And then, of course, we have endothelial changes where you can produce that plaque and end up having a heart attack, myocardial infarction. Please pay attention to this. Next side effect, anabolic steroid-induced hypogonadism. This is the basis of what I see. This is the basis of the problems with steroid use. This is the basis 
for post cycle therapy. This is the basis for all doctors that need to pay attention to this drug and all the steroids because when a man uses testosterone derivatives, even small amounts in any form across any board, in addition to any use of steroids, even pro hormones, it affects his CNS. And in the post period, there's the withdrawal symptom. It is true. This is the basis of my work. We see withdrawal symptoms, depression, anxiety. I've even seen, very rarely, suicides. So in summary, this medicine is indeed a medicine and a beautiful miracle medicine for men that need it for replacement therapeutic scenarios. From organic low testosterone through men that have damaged themselves with anabolic steroid use. This is a warning. This is a communication to young men that are considering using any steroid. Please be very careful and know that if you use steroids from that first injection or pill, you may be on testosterone forever. This is a communication to parents, siblings, loved ones, and doctors to understand and please understand my teachings and what's happening in the world with millions and millions of men that are using these agents for personal use. I hope this is helpful. Thank you so much. Dr. Thomas O'Connor here. I'm glad you made it to the end of the video. If you liked it, hit the like button and please subscribe to our channel. And I look forward to bringing you more cool and interesting videos just like this in the future. Stay strong and healthy.